So the constant acceleration equations that we need and will be very beneficial to us look much more intense than they actually really maybe are. It is a point to note that x can be substituted that x can be d and or y depending on the object's motion. We're using x because it's moving in the x direction. y, if we needed to use it, would be the up and down direction. The d is just displacement. and therefore can be substituted in. Sometimes you might see d sub x or d sub y as a way to indicate, okay? So these equations are found in other reference areas, books, websites, and we'll have different values or variables, I'm sorry, for x. Instead of x, it might be distance or d, displacement, it might be y. Okay? So we need to be careful and mindful. Is this a different equation? No, they're just using a different variable for displacement. Instead of just using x, they're using y because it's moving up and down in that example. Okay? We need to be mindful of that. These can be very helpful when you aren't always given the same or all the variables that you maybe would have otherwise. Maybe you're not given a final velocity. and you're given a distance and you're asked to find time. So you have to use certain equations. Maybe your initial velocity is zero, starting from a stop, and you're asked to find where it would be after a certain acceleration in time. Some of these we use a lot, some of these we don't use as much. You'll notice the first one looks to be very similar to that of the normal regular acceleration equation, just algebraically manipulated to solve for the final velocity. They are all technically manipulations of that same equation. But this is what you will need to kind of solve for the majority of the acceleration equations moving forward. So let's put some uh, together and try these out. A car starts uh, at rest and speeds up at 3.5 meters per second per second or 3. Um, 0.5 meters per second squared after the traffic light turns green how far will it have gone when it is going 25 meters per second which is roughly around 50 60 miles an hour uh, first off uh, if we identify some of our knowns and that our velocity in the final is 25 meters per second we have an acceleration of 3.5 meters per second squared. Since it starts from rest, we can infer that the initial velocity is 0 meters per second. We do not know the time, and we are asked to solve for how far 
or and since it's a car, I'm going to guess that it's moving in the x direction. Um, and therefore, that's what we want to solve for. Now, looking at our equation sheets, from the pre and especially since we've added some to from the previous slide, we need to find an equation that does not have time, has distance, or something to solve for distance, and then kind of goes from there. Now, best one to use would be the v sub f is equal squared is equal to v sub i squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in the displacement is there. That would be the best one to use, being as that I can also probably infer that the initial point would be 0 meters down the track or down the uh, road. Therefore, leaving me with just the x sub f or just x to solve for. I can then add my unknowns or my knowns into my equation here, giving me 25 squared is equal to 0 squared plus 2 times. 3.5 times x. I can then do some uh, calculations and get rid of some of the values. And by squaring 25, I would get 625. And that would equal, because 0 squared would just be 0. 2 times 3.5 would be 7x. Divide both sides by 7. x should equal 89.3 meters. So, a car traveling at a constant velocity of 25 meters per second needs to suddenly brake. It takes the driver 0.4 seconds to apply the brake as it slows down at a steady rate at 8.5 uh, meters per second squared. What is the total distance? Now, this problem here needs to be solved in two different steps. Um, this needs to be done a couple different ways. Let's resize the slide here so that we can still see our information but however we need to kind of in a way we'll draw out what's kind of going on here as the car is going the car travels a certain distance before brakes are even applied and be when that why that happens is in that time frame that that happens in is 0.4 seconds after it starts applying the brake it's going to eventually come to a stop with, that we know but how far does it go? So we have to solve it in two different places because two different things are happening at the same time. We have to find the distance that it moved before the brake was applied. And then the, diff the other part is we also need to find out how far it went as you were applying the actual brake to the car. And so you'll have a different acceleration, the acceleration when that's happening is going to be 8.5 meters per second squared and that will be negative. We don't have a time during that time frame but we will know that the velocity at the end is going to equal zero. We also will have a velocity at the initial and that would be the 25 
meters per second. So how far did it go in this way and then add it to the side that we did before? Now the equations that we use will be pretty straightforward. First one that we will use will be the most simplest one and that will be the distance is equal to velocity times time. That will give us 25 meters per second times the time of 0.4 seconds nope, wrote that in the wrong order of 0.4 seconds to give us a distance of 11 meters. Now the other side we have to solve it a little bit differently because we have acceleration, we have two velocities, and we don't have a distance. There, we have to take into account, again, the final velocity is something, the initial velocity plus 2a, and that would be the change in distance or in the x. With that, we have some other parts in that we can go with the velocity will be 0 squared, which would be very easy to solve for. The initial velocity of 25 meters per second, that still needs to be squared, plus a 2 times a negative 8.5 and I will put in a change in displacement, or change in x. To get that, and then x can also equal d. Now as we go through and start solving some of these, we will find that we would have to square 25 and then also move it to the other side so that we can start solving for our unknowns, which would give us a negative 625. And all reality, that should be meters squared, seconds squared, plus 2 times a negative 8.5, which would give us a negative... Sorry, not, it's not going to be a plus there. Actually, it's going to be negative or an equal sign. Now, if we go back to the label. That should be meters per second squared. That is then going to be times. I'm just going to now convert that into distance. Now I need to solve for distance or displacement. So I need to divide both sides by a negative 17.2 meters per second squared, that ne dividing it by that negative 17 will take into account the negatives, our seconds will cancel out, one of our meters will cancel out as well, giving us our answer of 36 point seven six meters that needs to be added to the 11 meters that it was moving before you applied the brake to give you a grand total distance before it stopped of 47.76 meters <laughs>